are joining me this morning. Uh, one of my favorite people on the planet, and I'm saying that with no exaggeration. Ladies and gentlemen, Peter Cetera. <laughs> yeah. How's it going? I don't even know. Uh, what, yeah, I don't even know what Peter Cetera sounds like. <laughs> I remember the very first time you and I had a conversation, we had an interview here on this morning show and I made that joke that, uh, you, you look like Peter Cetera and your response was one of my favorite. You said, I will find you. Yeah, exactly. and I thought, That's what a terrible. weird, what a weird reference to pick like Peter Cetera, you know, <laughs> Jake Busey, Gary Busey, Peter Cetera. What? Okay. Uh-oh. I appreciate your, uh, your, 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 your depth of bad references for how I look. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. All right, so I, I love me some Titus for one thing that you're a huge Prince fan and a very nice guy, by the way. Uh, you have this, you have an intimidating thing about you, yet you're you're a very nice guy. I think that's the perfect mix, especially for the ladies. Yeah. Uh, and uh, <laughs> and in fact, you work with another person like that, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. And I'm talking about Stacy Keach. That's a man that has scared me my whole life. Okay, so. But we'll get to that in a second. Did you know that you're blowing up on TikTok right now? Uh, no. What? People are video capturing clips of your podcast for political reasons and in a posting good way it or on bad TikTok way. in a good way and posting it on TikTok using you as like an evangelist. And these video clips, I'll send you a couple, are blowing up. I have people sending them to me all the time. And I'm like, hey, I know that guy. Are you lying? No, I am not kidding. I mean, your clips from your podcast are blowing up right now. You mean the Armageddon updates when I'm going off about what's going on? Yes. That's awesome. That's good to know. Good to know that a Chinese communist run website app is actually really, really found me. Good for that. That's, that's good stuff. <laughs> uh, when, when I saw that, I no thought wonder oh, my I thought... bank account was drained. <laughs> right. Well, that's what a lot of people are talking about. Oh, yeah, hey, I made 17 cents off of TikTok last year. Um, all right, but, uh, I'm addicted to TikTok, And when I saw the first video clip of you, I thought, oh, that's cool. Fan must have posted, but then all of a sudden one after another, and I'm talking just viral. So wow, I gotta, I gotta have my, wow. You think my people that work for me would have known that I love that. I'm getting told randomly. <laughs> it's, I think it's great that now 15 year old girls that shake their butt on TikTok also get to look at you. So that's not <laughs> uncomfortable. Like, oh my God. You would not believe it. So I learned this new dance for Cardi B and I got some political insight into how the country and democracy is being raped anyway. Yeah, so people are going to start doing the savage dance to your <laughs> That's All right, awesome. so one of the reasons why most people, when they hear the word Titus, they instantly think of, oh, yeah, that TV show. Now, whether it's a fan that has followed you as you go on tour or it's someone that just remembers you from your sitcom, uh, would you agree that that TV show was the one thing that really got you in the minds of, of most people in America? Yeah, I got really, I got really, uh, I was really blessed at that time. Uh, but well, the problem is, I, I demanded it. We, had, I had two other deals before for for sitcoms, and they were, they kept hiring me writers and stuff. And they would say, and I go, no, 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 I've been writing comedy since I was nineteen. And they're like, they're like, yeah, 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 yeah you're a comedian. Shh. So uh, those two shows were Shut horrible. Your pretty mouth. Yeah, exactly. You stop it. We liked you because of your writing ability and how funny you are making it up. But we don't need that now. We have professionals. <laughs> So what happened was is that I uh, – by the way, again, being a big fan of Prince, I decided when, my, when they offered my third, third deal, I said, you know what? Uh, I'm not doing the show unless I write it, period. And, I, and it, was, it was weird because I walked away from NBC. I walked away from CBS. Um, uh, C, the NBC deal for Titus was weird. They we went to a meeting, and I pitched the show. I even pitched the pilot episode, Dad is Dead, to NBC because I'd been writing for a while at that point. And uh, – and, and the woman at, at NBC goes, hey, this is a great idea. Let me show you what we're about at NBC. And she takes this rock and she slaps it on the coffee table in front of me. And it, it was from the – remember that those stores in the mall a long time ago called the Successories where they yes. had like these inspirational posters? And the rock said on it, risk. It wasn't even a, ro- a real rock. It was just – so she didn't go get the rock from the top of Everest or, or, you know, or, or, or from, the, from the pyramids. She went to the mall and got a rock that said risk. Or the it down. Warner Brothers store. Yeah, exactly. And I was like, all right. I was like, all right. These people love it. Walked out with my agent. My agent goes, 
that's the best meeting we've ever had. We get a call two hours later from NBC and they go, um, yeah, we believe the show's a little too risky. <laughs> <laughs> and I was so mad, you know, because I'm a little bit of a knee jerk with my life. And I started to write a letter to that executive stating why she should put the risk rock in the box I am sending her and please send it to me until you decide to actually freaking risk. So I love, I love the idea of you're going to take that rock away from her until she's ready for it. Till <laughs> you're ready to use that. <laughs> You know, just because you put a poster on your wall that says dream big and you know it doesn't mean you're dreaming big. So then we went to Fox and uh, I pitched it out to Fox and, and, and it was Michael Mindy. It was 20 television actually. Michael, Min, Michael and Mindy. Michael, uh, Mindy Schulteis and Michael Hannum. And they just looked at me and they go, will this work? And I'd already been doing Norman Rockwell's Bleeding and I said yes. I said 100%. I go do it all over the country. And they were like, okay, but the money deal was so low compared to my other deals because they just thought it was crazy. They were like, this is never going to work. And so we, we, it was lucky for me because we were flew, Titus flew under the radar, man. It just totally, like, no, people were like, yeah, yeah, we only spent that much money on that. And we turned in the script and they were like, huh, this is weird. We've never seen this. And then we got to uh, the pilot stage and they, they were like, uh, wow, I don't know if this is funny, but I'm laughing. You know, it was just weird. Executives are weird. Everyone's, every, everyone triple thinks it. And then the show hit, and it was just, even to this day, dude, you know what's crazy about the show? The box sets are 300 bucks. You can get them from 150 to $300 for the box set. That's crazy. Wow. Yeah. Now, uh, your TV show, I remember Zach Ward from the show, but I especially remember the guy that plays your dad. Stacy Keach, the good Stacey life. Stacy Keach. The, mm, Stacy Keach, how are you? It's good to be here. Hi, Stacy Keach. He's got a reputation because he 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 played. Um, he oftentimes played maybe a villain or just a, a rough guy, right? He yeah. he and, often and Mike Hammer and Mike oh, no. Hammer. He was always yeah. He was always a tough oh, guy. that's the show I couldn't think of. Yeah, so he always played a guy that was a little bit terrifying, and I I've always wondered is he in real life in any way similar to the guy that we think he is because of his roles? Um, no, he's actually the sweetest. It's so funny, guys that- Get now, out of here, come on. Now, now wait, let's be clear. What I find in life is the guys that are actually tough guys don't have to be tough guys. If you piss Stacy Keach off, I, w I don't wanna be around you because, you, because <laughs> you know, just body parts, pick it up stuff. And he, he, he's such a sweetheart. So when I asked him to do this reunion special, uh, there's a couple of stories I have about Stacy Keach. Stacy Keach, first of all, my dad, my dad, you know, him and my dad look almost identical. They, they could be brothers. There's a picture of the three of, of, three of us together and Stacy Keach and my dad look, it's, fri it's frightening actually. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So uh, one thing we, when we were doing the pilot for Titus, I came down, my dad came down to LA, we're filming it. And you know, it's pretty bad. He did have to deal with Norman Rockwell's bleeding, which basically just decimated every aspect of his life. Now we're gonna put it on national television. So we were really, <laughs> he was loving it. Uh, you know, my dad at the end of the day, so Keach tells me the story, he goes, oh, we, I went and filmed them for this thing we just did. And he's like, let me tell you something about your father. I told you, right? He goes, so the day he came down to the pilot, I looked at him and I go, how the hell are you gonna let him do this? And my dad, he goes, and your dad looked at me and he said, as long as it's funny and the check clears. <laughs> as long as it's funny and the check clears. So my dad really was a version of Keach. I mean, nothing, I was, I was thinking about the show the other day, someone was giving me crap about creating it and they were like, you know, we, you know, as one of the executive producers, it was got mad that we were doing this reunion special. And, uh, uh, and he, he was mad at me about it. And he goes, you know, he goes, basically, he goes, you didn't, we created those characters. And I, I was like, dude, no, you didn't. I actually, we were going through a, an album. My aunt was down for the, for, she was, a, she's a nurse and she was doing the COVID stuff that, you know, the safety stuff on the, on the, the shoot we just did. And we were going through our old family albums and holy crap, my dad was worse. We're flipping through family albums with family, family. And then every picture is my dad with another woman who nobody knows. I kept going to my aunt, I go, who the hell is that? And she goes, I don't know. And then my wife goes, who's this girl? Which, which wife is this? I go, I don't even know who that is. We went through 30 women. Dad's all like, yeah, what's up, girl? He was such a dog. Always had a beer. We have a picture of him in water skiing and he's got a beer. I'm not lying. I'm not lying. And so I realized that I didn't make that show up. It's just my family. You right. Know? Yeah. You know? so, so producer's trying to claim that he wrote your life then. Basically. Yeah. And Tommy was based on this guy named Dave Bowlby. Dave Bowlby, who's a great, he was a great dude. 
But Dave Bowie was very prissy. He had to have underwear from Nordstrom's. And so when we designed the character Tommy, I was like, you know, my buddy, my, one of my really good friends is named Tommy. But I named, so I didn't want to name Dave Bowlby Dave Bowlby because Dave Bowlby would have sued Christopher Titus for using the name Dave Bowlby. So right. what I did was, and so, but Dave wasn't gay. Dave got married and he had two kids and then he got divorced. And now he's married to a dude. <laughs> right? Hello, everybody. Hey, thank you. I called it. <laughs> are you, are you am- our personal savior? Are you? <laughs> Nostratitis. I called it. I no called it when I was sixteen, man. Called it when I was sixteen. That is fantastic. Now, the reason why we're even bringing this up is because you have found a way to bring the cast back together, and that's happening this Friday night. Yeah. So as David Shatra said, we got the band back together. So in the middle of COVID, I mean, because you know the world. Here's the thing: things are going so well on the planet right now. I just figured, hey, let's just have some fun. So I can't go out on the road and do comedy because. I'm spewing virus on an audience and 300 people are spewing virus on me. Or if I'm doing a theater, that's a thousand people flying COVID toward me. So spewing virus, if that's not the name of your next tour in 2021, <laughs> I would be way, so disappointed. You know what? I'm actually writing that down. That is, I was trying to, I'm trying to name after carrying monsters. I was trying to come up with the name spewing virus. That's, that's not a bad at all. Actually. I am on board. I'm jotting. Wow. I will give you credit in the, in the liner notes. All uh, right. So, uh, so we, I, I, I was just like, what can we do? What can we do? We've been doing these, we've been doing these uh, shows. I, I have a studio. We, cause I, I've been doing comics. We book Ron Funches. We book, uh, you know, Josh Wolf, Fortune Feast. Cause I have three cameras and I'm like, I don't, I don't think comedians, anything, no artist should have to have to yell their art into a computer from their kitchen, you know? And right. so it's just not the way it should be done. So I set up a studio and I bought led lights and we have cameras and I thought, your productions, by the way, from when you have had comedians on, from when you did your own show, uh, Everlast, uh, all of this is better produced than when you see CNN, NBC Nightly News, all of these things where they have all these people doing Skype. It almost looks like some of them are on their iPhones. <laughs> and then here's Titus with a full production from a soundstage yeah. uh, doing a stand-up with no audience, and it's produced... 300 times better it's crazy. thanks man I, I believe that's important man you, you know so we, we do have an audience but they're all wearing masks and they're drinking their wine through straws and then we mic them so so if we have 18 people or eight people we, we mic them so it sounds like a lot more so at least the performer can get a vibe and so i said what if we what if i just i got all this free time what if i wrote an episode of titus uh, for the 20th reunion and uh i'm just dumb enough to do it and i wrote i wrote an episode called the homecoming because if you remember the last episode of titus Titus ended up in a mental institution. So that's where I start. So the story starts where I get out of the mental institution. Dave uh, is supposed to pick me up, but he's been using the wrong paleo pale, uh, pagan calendar. He's been using the Wiccan calendar, not the Neo Norse calendar. So, yeah. so, it's off, so it's off by a week. So they don't even pick me up from the mental hospital. I get out of the mental hospital, no one's there to pick me up. And the show gets worse from there. <laughs> I mean, so we wrote it eight years later. I get out of the mental hospital. Uh, the reason I, w- I, I was supposed to be in for three months after they thought we were terrorists. Uh, and, uh, and because I kept being honest with the therapist, uh, the therapist kept saying, yeah, you need to stay here a little while longer. <laughs> so, and I can't tell you what happened because Keech, Stacey Keech's wife was like, he can't, he can't come to the studio. He's 80. He can't do it. So uh, I was going to not do it. And then Zach Ward, of all people, came up with this br- just idea. He brought up a movie, that, and I was like, holy crap, we could do that. And I wrote a script, and Stacy Keach is in every scene of this script. And it, the way he is in it is so funny and so outrageous that when we, st- we started filming, and we, we started filming, and, and it, I'm not, can't even t- I, I can't I don't want to hint about it. The way Stacy Keach appears on the set is so funny that I, I, I had to stop taping. I was like, guys, we gotta stop filming. And I just laughed for five minutes because I just I had to get it out. I, yeah, it's, it's awesome. So, so we're doing an episode on Friday night, this Friday, 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern. Check your local times. A lot of people can't do math, so figure out what time it is where you are compared to the, the West Coast. Well, that, the time thing really irritates you. It's I, I, I'm starting to think people are asking the question just to set you on fire. <laughs> yeah, this gets them. Yeah, that's how that's how bad trolling is going now. They're just like, no, 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 you, no. Bring up Mountain Time and then minus two. He'll flip out. <laughs> Um, 
So, he, All right, uh, so, so the episode's happening, but isn't there going to be like a Q and A and the whole thing yeah, as well? We got the whole we got the whole cast there. Stacy's going to be on a big monitor behind us on Zoom. We're going to have a Q and A. We're going to show. We're actually going to show the flashback reel, uh, flashback reel from the bloopers from the show. Then we're going to have some Zoom callers. There's ten people calling in with questions for the show. We're going to sit on talk. We're going to show. Uh, two of the episodes leading up to the real ending, and then we're showing at the end of it, we're showing a brand new 20th reunion tribute episode. Where I, you know, look, I, the show got canceled because I'm a moron because I talked smart off to the network president. I never got to write the final episode, I got to write the final episode, and we filmed it. And I have to be honest with you, we were editing, I was editing till midnight last night because hey, it's only on in a couple days, we'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> can you can you imagine in any other time of your life editing up until the thing airs? I mean, that I'm I'm stressed. I'm in Michigan and I'm not in this world and I'm stressed hearing you say those words. Well, even on Titus we would do that. We had a great team on no Titus. Kidding. Yeah, we would actually depending on a son, you know, depending on what it was, we were just moving so fast and because it, the the show was always we had the real space, we had the black and white stuff, and then we had the flashback. So it was three different elements. They had to be assembled. It wasn't like just filming a show. So at times we were uh, we were editing on on Thursday afternoon before it aired on Friday, uh, you know. Or no, sorry, sorry. We were editing up to the, the show. We were working hard to the show on Friday. We would edit the show aired on Tuesday. We had to deliver by we had, we actually passed our delivery date a couple of times, and the network put it on anyways because we were doing so well. So, so yeah, but yeah. So it's it will get it done. I hope. <laughs> All right. So, so if uh, people listening right now want to want to check this whole thing out, how can they find that new Titus episode? Uh, the new Titus episode. Okay, here's what you do: go to combustionlive.com for tickets, or you go to titusreunion.eventbrite.com, or you can go to my website, christophertitus.com. Uh, uh, you can get tickets. It's ten bucks, um, and that's paying for production and the and the actors. I did have to pay the actors. Um, but I guarantee you this, it is laugh out loud funny and you get to see the cast and, um, we're going to talk about it. Keech is Keech. I can't just to hear Keech talk about the show. Keech actually thanked me. He said, we went to film. I went up to his house to film all this stuff for him. And he goes, you know, Titus, uh, that show gave me a 20 year bump in my career. And I said, yeah, you paid the same character on every sitcom for the last 10 years. And he burst out laughing and he goes, exactly. <laughs> I so, don't care how I don't care how old he is. I still wouldn't talk smack to Stacy Keach. No, no, it's he's awesome. Just so intimidating to me. But I'm looking forward to them. By the way, I'm going to have all those links that uh, Titus just mentioned on our website at wkfr.com, just to make sure for anybody that wants to see it, it's just going to be a one click for you, and you can uh, get it. I mean, I think ten bucks is a steal. I watched your live stream when you when you did your first one. Um, we learned uh, a lot since then. We, it's got a lot yeah. better since then. You know, I still, I, I could tell you in the very beginning, you're just like, I'm not used to performing for a crowd of five, but, uh, something happened and all of a sudden you just kind of set fire, which, which is expected once you guys ironed out the kinks, uh, we had a great time. It's just over on the, on the East coast. Since I get up at three in the morning, uh, <laughs> I was really tired by the end of the show, but, uh, <laughs> I, wow, well, what a dude, that's so much. So what we're doing here. now. No, you're still gonna have to pay for it, but we're gonna let it run because people around the world. We got people zooming in from Australia. There's people that are calling from Canada, and and well, Canada's fine, but I mean like Australia, really. Um, there's New Zealand people that want that saw Titus that are calling in because we, we're doing this Zoom thing. And we have certain we're using certain fans, and it's crazy that people still love it. So the episode had to stand up, and um, my my uh, the Highlander and I were actually editing it yesterday, and dude, there's a flashback with Zach. Um, cause basically I, they have to explain to me what they did with the shop while I was in the mental hospital with my, my hot rod shop. And it's, I, I can't even tell you, we were laughing so hard. It, that's, that's slowing us down on editing. Actually, every time we get something funny, we every time we get something funny, we watch it five times and giggle. And then we actually get back to work. So yeah, well, doing it. So it's this Friday, 6 PM, go to, um, go to Eventbrite, uh, Titus reunion and get tickets. You can go to combustionlive.com and I guarantee you're going to have a blast. Yeah, by the no, way, yeah, the story, look. the story is going to freak you out when it, the big crux of the story I'm, to all you people that are fans out there, I'm telling you, it is going to blow your mind. What happens in this show? I'm looking forward to it. Now, uh, Friday night, I will be on the roof of a building in, in Portage, Michigan, because we're doing a charity event called roof sit where 
I go up on Thursday night and I stay up there until Saturday and we raise money to fight child abuse in, awesome. Kal- in Kalamazoo County. It's, it's a huge thing we do every year and we're doing our best to social distance and all that junk. But, uh, I'm going to have some people on the roof with me Friday night. We're all going to be in our pajamas and we're going to stream your show, uh, on the roof together. That's and awesome. Watch it from there. Yeah. And Hey, next time when the COVID's over and, and you need me to do a benefit for anything for child abuse, I, anti-child abuse, I'm in, I will do a show for you guys. Let's do it. Okay. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Uh, thanks brother. Got to get, I, I got another call at eight 30, man. Do your thing. Uh, Great talking to you, and Dude, uh, always, it's always a blast. And thank you for the help, man. And also, man, just that you're that you're always there, brother. I appreciate it. What do you think of the new Prince album coming out? They're going to release Sign of the Times. <sighs> okay, real quick. I know I got to let you go, but real no, quick, right. you, have you heard the new uh, the two new releases of Witness? No. There, there's there's two new versions. I'll email them to you. Oh, uh, can I just look it up? Okay, email them to me. You cool. Well, That's listen, I you yeah, can't. They're on Spotify. You can just listen to them on Spotify. They're way, they're so time, amazing. Every time you every time we start talking Prince, I turn into twelve year old girl. I'm like, oh my god, witness, is it out? Really? I can't wait. <laughs> it's it's one of my, dude. That's my all time favorite bootleg song. I, witness has always been my shit. And the fact that we're gonna have, I looked at the track listing. There's actually a lot of songs I never heard of, which never happens because I have so many bootlegs. On the so side, there's actually new shit for us. Wait, there's like 20, I get like 20 gigs of Prince movies. There's new stuff on the sign of the times album that, that reboot that, that, yep, that I did not have on that thing. I sent you that there's, Dude, even you just stuff. made my whole week, <laughs> you know, you know, that I think you're, you're with me on this in the beginning. I was really nervous about how they were handling this releasing new Prince music stuff. And they kept just doing all the purple vinyl reissues. Who gives a crap, right? right. I want the new stuff. But all, I think they're actually doing it right. The way they did the 1999 deluxe and now the sign of the times. I'm on. Love the 1999 Deluxe, man. I'm they a, did a great it, job. Yeah. It, imagine being an artist that's so good that years after his death, he's releasing not two songs, 20 songs. That's awesome. Uh, and, and the people like us are so excited. We're like 16-year-olds standing outside of a record store at midnight <laughs> on Monday night. You know what I mean? That's what it feels like. Yeah, we need to get lives. We're grown-ass men. All right, my brother. I'll talk to you. All right. Have a good one, bud. Thanks. Thanks, man. Bye.